I got a letter stating that I was about to be garnished. And yes, my next check, I was garnished. They took 25% of my earnings. So I was unsure of what this bill was. I just didn't know. They didn't tell me, they wouldn't tell me. To be honest, I was afraid. I was raising my three grandchildren and I had no idea how I was gonna manage to feed these kids. Anita, like many of our clients who come to our office's debt collection defense clinic, don't know about a debt until they're garnished. This whole thing started with an assault against me by my fiance at the time, and he punched out my two front teeth. For the emergency dentistry she needed, her insurance would pay what it could, and any overage would be paid by the perpetrator. And after she broke up with him and he was maintaining payments and then stopped, but that was not a debt that she owed anyway. The debt collector had waited about five of the six year statute of limitations before filing it. The judgment was entered without her knowledge. She didn't get notice of the lawsuit. She's not responding to the lawsuit. And in that instance, a creditor can obtain a judgment by default. The default rate in civil consumer cases is very, very high, meaning judgments are entered without people's knowledge. Once you get a judgment, that judgment can last up to 20 years. Judgments were entered at 12% interest at the time. The debt was literally $1,800. That grew to thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. I would have never been able to pay that debt off. She's getting garnished, so she's racking her brain to figure out what is this and couldn't get that information from the debt collection agency. They're very deceptive and very skilled at being evasive. A collection agency's role is to try and recover what they would call distressed debt for original creditors. And they are a for-profit business and they profit by collecting money as efficiently as possible. The debt collection agency told her it's too late to do anything about it, which is patently untrue. The debt collectors, they had an attorney's office that was representing them. I literally went to their office and knocked on their door. So I tried to reason with them and say, you can't garnish my wages, that's too much. And they were like, well, that's what we are going to do. But you can't just keep billing me for something. I don't even know what it is. And they were like, oh, well, of course we can. It's an industry that is so dehumanized that they just don't care who they're collecting or how they're collecting. I was barely making it as it was. It's already hard trying to pay the lights bills. I had to have a car to get to work. I had to put gas in it. I had to get these kids around to doctor's appointments and everywhere. I was looking for an attorney that would even listen to me, knowing that I didn't have any money. And I ran across the Northwest Justice Project. They managed to get the garnishment stopped. Ms. Belcher had been the victim of something called sewer service, which is when debt collection agencies and the legal messengers they employ claim to have served someone, but they actually haven't. She had no connection to this apartment at this address or the person they say they served. She had records of where she lived at the time of the alleged service. My attorney actually came to my house and helped me find some documents. My attorney, Julia, she goes, Anita, I think I found it. We were on the last box. And she goes, yep, it's right here. That was so amazing. That was one amazing moment. So we had her lease and utility bill of where she was actually living at the time of service. The district court overlooked the overwhelming evidence and sided with the collation agency. It was really a systemic failure from start to finish. My attorney was like, don't lose hope. We're gonna take this further. We appealed and I say we, it was a team effort. Myself, David Tarshis, who has since retired, as well as the legal assistants, paralegals, colleagues from other offices, interns who helped moot us before hearings and on appeal, we got a really great result. It was just amazing. And then it came out in my favor. And then I got a settlement bigger than I could even imagine. And I bought a house. <laughs> I have two grandchildren still left with me and we're good.
The last time that we did a statistical survey of representation in the state of Washington, it was under 4% of the people that had dealt with that collection lawsuits had obtained an attorney. So I think if NJP were out of the picture, uh, we'd probably be looking at a sub 1% representation rate in the state of Washington. We know that debt and the stress of debt and the impact on credit, all of it hits our clients of color harder. I feel like it's our job to get in there and keep debt collectors accountable, educate the courts about practices we see, and fight for our clients' civil rights. I know there's thousands of people in my same situation. It's important for me to just share my story to help another family out of that. It still blows my mind that I was able to be represented by great attorneys and actually get a favorable outcome. It was amazing, truly amazing.